Batteries are based on the principle of galvanic cells. A galvanic cell consists of two electrolytic solutions which are separated from each other. In this example, the first solution is zinc sulfate, the second one is cupric sulfate. In this combination, it is called a Daniell cell. The solutions contain positively and negatively charged atoms, which are called ions. The solutions are connected through a salt bridge that allows the flow of ions. A salt bridge is for example a pipe filled with a saline solution such as KNO3. Both ends of the salt bridge are equipped with a material that allows the exchange of ions. This is called a diaphragm. A zinc cylinder is put into the zinc sulfate and a cylinder of copper is put into the cupric sulfate. These cylinders are the electrodes of the galvanic cell. The zinc cylinder consists of uncharged zinc atoms. For reasons of simplicity, the atoms are being shown in this animation with only four electrons. These electrons orbit around the nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. The zinc sulfate solution is partially composed of zinc ions. Actually, zinc ions are zinc atoms that are positively charged because they have lost two electrons. The SO4 molecules of the solution, however, are negatively charged. A very simple explanation thereof is given here. The sulfur atom can be found at the center. Two of four atoms of oxygen possess an extra electron. They have been colored black in this animation. With a positively charged zinc ion and a negatively charged SO4 molecule, the solution itself is uncharged. Zinc is a reactive metal. Consequently, zinc reacts swiftly with the solution. That is, zinc atoms lose electrons at the zinc electrode and enter the solution as zinc ions, which are, as mentioned before, positively charged. This type of chemical reaction is called oxidation. The same is true for the copper electrode. Copper atoms lose electrons to become positively charged copper ions. This, however, proceeds at a much slower rate, resulting in an imbalance. Initially, both electrodes were uncharged, but now a strong negative charge is building up gradually in the zinc electrode. When the electrodes are connected to each other through a conductive wire, electrons will flow from the zinc electrode to the copper electrode and a voltage of about 1.1 volt can be measured with a voltmeter. However, as the imbalance will be resolved quickly and the solution will become more and more positively or negatively charged, other chemical reactions must take place so as to not stop the flow of electrons and, consequently, the electric current. Positively charged copper ions contained in the cupric sulfate solution are pulled to the copper electrode and kind of absorb the electrons coming from the zinc electrode in order to become uncharged copper atoms. This is called reduction. Therefore, the copper electrode becomes uncharged. Eventually, the cupric sulfate solution will be charged negatively because it loses the positively charged copper ions. The zinc sulfate solution will be positively charged. The salt bridge contains positively and negatively charged ions. The diaphragm allows the exchange of ions, which neutralizes the charge in both solutions. Since these reactions involve oxidation, here in the half cell with zinc sulfate, and reduction, here in the half cell with cupric sulfate, this type of chemical reaction is called redox reaction.